Our political reporter, Natalie Brand, is standing by at the Surface Hub. And uh, as we reported earlier, Natalie, NBC News is projecting Jay Inslee to have won a second term. You're breaking down the actual numbers as they're coming yeah, in. Yeah, we're getting the numbers county by county. And you can see that the key counties here, King, Pierce, and Snohomish, have not yet reported. We keep refreshing the map. But what we have so far is uh, Inslee winning Jefferson, which was to be expected. The darker color means over 60%. And also Kitsap here and then uh, some of these states in red those are Bryant wins uh, the dark red denotes Bryant over 60% in Lewis here in Cowlitz he's over 50 but uh, not quite over that 60. Yeah it's, it's pretty typical of what you're gonna see the numbers but the, the, the rural turnout is what I want to I want to see in the in the what's gonna happen here based upon the Trump supporters coming out and still voting Republican down the ticket if they do mm -hmm. that'll be the question. Are they really just there for Trump, or are they actually going to vote the whole ticket? Now let's go over to Natalie. Yeah, we have an update at the board with Pierce County filling in for Inslee, but it's not a huge win. You can see he's up just over 6,000 votes here, but this is the second largest population center uh, in the entire state uh, going for Inslee, but not by much. Um, it's interesting as you look at that map that Natalie was just talking about, you really get a feel for where uh, the voters are in Washington. Whitman County, of course, Washington State University. It's a university town. It's going to trend more liberal. Uh, break down the west side of the state, you guys, well, in terms of... Yes, and particularly focusing on, on Grace Harbor County because it used to be, right, as Natalie has reported, a Democratic county, and now it is trending and has trended recently very Republican and big, big time. I'd say watch the 19th legislative district. Um, we've only had two Republicans elected to the House since 1936. We had one senator in 1980 that was elected, but the Quigg family, it was J.T. Quigg, and he, the, the Quigg family are pillars of that community. That's how that happened. It could happen tonight. Um, they could make history, and part of it is because that is one of the strongest trumped, Trump districts in the state. So these are the new numbers with the map completely filled in and King County. We were eagerly awaiting King County. You can see Governor Inslee up over 70% in that county, bringing his win right now, uh, his uh, margin to 56-43. Without King County, remember, we were looking at about 50-50. We were waiting for King to fill in and we were also waiting for Skagit, where he is also up right now. Turning to the Senate, uh, Senator Patty Murray was up even without King County, but now with King County, you can see that brings her number right now to over 60% in King County. She's at 75%. Now to some of the really interesting statewide measures, statewide minimum wage, 1433. You can see uh, it's been approved with nearly 60% of the votes uh, that have been counted so far. An extremely big win uh, in King County, 70% here. Uh, Eastern Washington did not go for minimum wage as much, uh, with the exception again of, of Whitman here. So uh, the darker shade denotes a a larger, uh, in this case, rejection of over 60%. So this is what minimum wage looks like. Carbon tax did not pass. Actually, it was rejected overwhelmingly. Only one county, King County, approved this measure. This is the carbon tax tax swap measure that had a lot of environmental and progressive uh, groups divided. And ST3, which a lot of us were eagerly watching. There's no polling going into tonight, so we didn't really know what to expect. You can see it's been approved 55 45 King County giving this uh, measure the win here uh, with an approval rate nearly 60%, just under 90,000 votes. Pierce County rejecting Sound Transit 3 and Snohomish a very narrow victory, just over 3,400 votes. We just got word that California, uh, Ricky, did you say went to Clinton? Is that right? Uh huh, went to Clinton and Oregon as well, and Washington as well has been declared, as well as Hawaii. Idaho has been declared to, uh, to go to Donald Trump, and you just saw. And you just saw that change reflected on the screen. So it shows now that Hillary Clinton has 209 electoral votes, 172 for uh, Donald Trump. Uh, California, with the mother load of electoral votes there, over 50 of them. And 270 is the magic number to clinch the presidency.
Something else that we are watching at the Washington state level is the balance of power in Olympia in the state house. Uh, and if we can take a look, so this is based on the latest trends. A lot of these races will come down to very thin, narrow margins. So too close to call, but this is what it looks like in the state house. It looks like Democrats could be uh, on target to pick up two seats. The, the, the total going into tonight or the margin was 50-48. So if they were to grow their majority, uh, that could happen. In the state Senate going into tonight, uh, the Republicans, the majority coalition caucus was uh, at 26 to 23, but it looks like Democrats perhaps have could be on their way to picking up one seat, and we'll show you why if we can take a look at a full screen with one of the big races we've been watching. This is uh, the 41st legislative district, which includes Bellevue and Mercer Island. The incumbent Republican Steve Litzow is currently down by 10 points, but again, a, a pretty narrow margin there, uh, under 5,000. So. We will be continuing to keep a close eye on that. Interesting to note that this is the races, one of the races that President Obama got involved uh, in robocalling. Now to another close one that we are watching. This is District 28 uh, in South Sound and Pierce County. And incumbent Republican Steve O'Ban is up right now, but not by much. You can see uh, his challenger, Melissa Pelliquin, is just a, a few points behind him. So those are the two races that we will really be watching that has implications for the balance of power in the state Senate. King 5 has partnered with Survey USA to get feedback on how Washingtonians voted in this election. And one of the things we wanted to know was what qualities are important to you in a presidential candidate? And are you voting for a candidate or against their opponent? David Espinosa Hall is here to break down the data for us using Power BI. David. Yes, what a night so far, guys. Well, check this out. We wanted to check in with Clinton voters on what were some of the important qualities that they saw for this lady, Hillary Clinton. This is what we found. Before I break it down, take a good look. Experience in government, right around 46%. Pretty high, right? I found that interesting, or I wasn't really too surprised, I should say, because she had the experience as a first lady with Bill Clinton being the president and also the secretary of state. Now, here is where it got interesting for me. Honesty and integrity tied, basically, 13% between the two of them. I found that interesting when we talk about honesty because recently we've all been following the scandal involving her and these emails. So that's what I found interesting about this particular graphic. Now let's flip things and talk about Donald Trump, but also keep this in mind, 13% here. I have to move quickly, 30 seconds. So important qualities for Trump. Hillary had 13%, Trump at 42%. Remember, he had that tape issue with uh, Billy Bush in the lewd comments. Also, real estate. He and his father, they had the real estate operation. They were sued for discriminating against minorities. 20%, that's probably what you would expect in terms of creating jobs and standing one's ground right at 15%. Then we move now to the last graphic. Washington voters, what they were for and against. In terms of Clinton voters, 64 were in favor of Hillary. 35% were not in favor of Trump. And then when we go to Trump's side, 59%, pretty close, were in favor for Trump. And then 38% were against Hillary Clinton. So that's a breakdown of what Washington voters were for and against. Mark and Lori? All right, David, thank you. And as we head back to NBC's election night coverage, let's take another look at the Electoral College picture right now. Clinton with 104 electoral votes to Donald Trump's 137. And in just about a minute from now, the candidates will add to those totals as polls close in four states with 21 electoral votes, including the battleground state of Nevada. We will continue to track the big and national races, and we'll be back in about 25 minutes.